<laughs> Humans, you got a lot of stuff going on. I don't think that's a bold claim. If you didn't, you would not have the container store. And I would not get unreasonably excited when you go in there. And I get it, man. I too have felt the intoxicating wash of potential organization once against protest and general grumblage. We have to go in there. I just wanted to go to Epic Burger and cruise Best Buy for a light graze across the news games I can't afford. Fooling myself into thinking that maybe that today is the day that there is a special. And then we enter its clinical atmosphere because it was right next door. We also got to check out the deals at Home Goods, even though the fuck we even need a woven seagrass basket for pillows. Pillows don't need a place. They have a home. It's in the bed. They live in the bed. They vacation on the floor, as it has been, as it shall be. But you go into Home Goods because it's essentially the same thing as wandering aimlessly through the Lego section at Target. You can make anything seem reasonable if you want it enough. <laughs> and once you've made the lap past CB2 in the world market, there it is. And there you might as well be like hyped and not be hypocritical. It's just, just go in and find something, right? After you've wandered through all the different mall places. It's not hypocritical, it is hypocritical. It's like, cause like, here's the thing. You wander through a Williams Sonoma like you can afford that shit. Uh, and then you walk in, there's so many options of stuff receptacles that rewires your brain into rethinking your life because maybe you've been doing it wrong. Maybe you need a series of rattan cane hinged boxes because they'd be perfect to put your coasters in. This is the sign, the moment, the realization that you got a lot going on because you don't need to hide your coasters, it's fine. And you're not gonna be questioned by the normal police for having coasters in full view of guests. But like, it's kind of nice to have an enclosure to put them in, to honor them, to give them their place. And in life, as I have learned, as I have watched you all throw out your trash into the trash below the telephone wire where I do my thing, organization is nice. There's peace in repetitive, organized movement in life because everyone else is either being a dick or losing their minds or both. It doesn't have to be that you Marie kondo your place, tossing out shit that doesn't spark joy. Though it does help, because like if it's not pretty, not useful, or not both, then it's next year's white elephant swap. One human's trash <laughs> is another human's thoughtful and expensive gift. Things have uses, it's not in question. It's what use it is to you. That is the core of an organized momentum. And sometimes it's not even stuff. Sometimes it's just doing something. Cleaning baseboards, throwing out old pens, tightening screws, like any screw you can find in your place. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're a crewman on a sea voyage. <laughs> Meticulous living seems to be a great peace for you humans. And if you don't believe me, did you do your wordle today? <laughs> There's no cash prize at the end, man. You're only competing against yourself. <laughs> and you're, it's a meditative state, and that's nice. I don't know if you've been watching the news, but like organized, meditative, peaceful states sure sound nice in the chaotic void because everybody else is either being a dick or losing their minds or both. None of it is sparking joy. And after some time in a meditative state, you get to step back and look at where you're at, what you have done, and how it's all going, and holy shit, you might have built something awesome. And that is why some humans build shit out of matches. First off, some of you born in a post-AOL world might be wondering, what is a match? And I'm glad you asked that, because like, I've been watching you throw shit out, humans, and even though you got lighters, butane torches, and those long neck scary ones that look like a robot giraffe with a taser for a face, matches are still a thing. In a simpler time, they were all you had to get the fire going. Earliest I could find while digging through the trash that is the internet, Googling is what we call it, but it's dumpster diving without Febreze. <laughs> they go back to China, AD 577, where impoverished court ladies used wooden sticks coated in sulfur called light-bringing slaves or fire-inch sticks. And except that was all in Chinese, which probably sounded way cooler. <laughs> After that, it was all chemicals and creativity, but like I was saying, keeping at it and organizing, eventually the English chemist John Walker accidentally invented the friction match while trying to figure out the friction match. He called it Lucifer. <laughs> and it lit a fire under the public's tobacco smoke and ass, leading to an increase in smoking tobacco and also people accidentally lighting themselves on fire. <laughs> It also gives off a nasty smell, leading to the warning label, quote, persons whose lungs are delicate should by no means use lucifers. So, 
All you Home Depot dads cracking wise about matches having warning labels, take note, you humans have always been this stupid. <laughs> Flash, watch out, forward to 1845. Austrian chemist Anton Schroeder von Christelli figures out red phosphorus and we get the safety match that doesn't blow up in your face, which was a major human achievement. Simple moves, humans, you'll set the word on fire. Safely. Speaking of achievements, flash safely forward to 1951. <laughs> When Sir Hugh Beaver, Hugh, managing director of the Guinness Brewery, yes, that Guinness, my goodness, got in an argument while on a shooting party about which game bird is the fastest in Europe, and this Monty Python-esque argument bit <laughs> gave Hugh the idea that maybe there should be a book around to look that shit up. And in 1954, he commissioned a fact-finding agency run by twin brothers Norris and Ross to compile what would from then on be known as the Guinness Book of World Records. There, I just gave you trivia answers for days. Don't fuck it up. Which brings us to December 2015 when Richard Plode of the Artworks and Bridges Department of the Charente Maritime Council in West France begins using matches to build a model of the Eiffel Tower. Why? What have I been saying? <laughs> now, within the matchstick model community is customary to tell John Walker, Anton Schroeder von Christelli, and the ancient Chinese impoverished court ladies to fuck off and snip the heads off to make the model, and I'll let you figure out why, to make the models. Much like Richard Plodd told his friends to do, we're moving on. They were like, yo, Richard, so soleil, you nerd. And he was like, no, it's just we occupé. And then went back <laughs> to meticulously gluing headless matches together to create a scale model of the Eiffel Tower. Meticulous, small moves, meditative piece. You writing this down? He finally completed his project on December 27, 2023, which was the 100th anniversary of French engineer Gustave Eiffel's death. Did he plan it? Probably. We're taking our time. <laughs> We're being meticulous. We're organized, goddammit. Stick your judgments right into that sterilite black stacker tote, $10 at the container store. <laughs> After 4,200 hours with 706 point, uh, not point, it's like 700, uh, I'm gonna do the math, hang on. Scabity, scabity, scabity. 706,900 matches and 50 pounds of glue because he was being meticulous. His matchstick Eiffel Tower stood 20 feet tall and he figured, madre, after all this time, laying my life stick by stick, this has to be the tallest. If only there was someone I could call and tell them. Thankfully, back in the day, Sir Hugh Beaver got in a fucking comedy sketch about it with his shooting buddies, and such a book was made. The Guinness World Record Committee checked it out, and on January 30th, 2024, after eight years of repetitive, organized movement against the chaos of the world, they rejected his 24-foot <laughs> tall matchstick house because he did not use commercially available matches. Oh, you guys want some tea? Turns out, the way the Guinness Book works is they got standards. And one of those standards for making matchstick model places is that you gotta use commercially available matches, which is what Richard Plodd did originally, cutting the heads off, have you figured out why, to make his model before getting annoyed, because I mean like, come on man, matches come from somewhere, they're manufactured, clearly somebody puts the heads on these fucking things. So, he calls up the manufacturer and has them shipped pre-head, still the same matchstick, and of course he didn't have to clip the dynamite off. Guinness was like, yep, that's not regulation. Questioning his matchstick usage, like a lot of you are questioning the metaphors I chose to get us here. <laughs> See, the original guidelines that the matches had to be used and they had to look like matches, them's the rules, go quiet about it, you peen. And yet, and yet, this epic 24-foot monument to meticulosity did not end up in the trash, as one might assume, given how much I've been talking about it, and how much I've been talking about watching the trash you make, humans. Yesterday, literally yesterday, February 9th, 2024, quote, it seems we have been heavy-handed in the application of our rules in this case, said Guinness, Noting that it is common within the matchstick model making community to cut the heads off the matches because as John Walker, Anton Schroeder von Christelli, and the ancient Chinese impoverished court leaders had observed all this time, so it doesn't catch on fucking fire! <laughs> Reversing the decision, Guinness, Guinness announced yesterday, quote, 
We are therefore very happy to award Richard with the Guinness World Record title and have corrected some inconsistencies within our rules, which now allowed matchsticks to be snipped and shaped as the modelers see fit. And after eight meticulous years of meditative organizational pace, Richard Plott has officially built the not just the tallest Eiffel structure, the tallest matchstick structure ever recorded. <laughs> Humans take note. Anything is reasonable if you want it enough. There's peace and repetition. Organization is fucking nice. So, while the world figures its shit out, hopefully, maybe, possibly, you humans could just take your time to build something awesome, hour by hour, stick by stick, and make sure it doesn't burn your fucking house down. Also, fuck the Guinness Book of World Records. Build your own matchstick house however you want. I love you. Good night. <laughs>